Well, you just heard it. the stats. 125 strikes, 85 sites, seven general locations. Six days after the fact. In the middle of the night. Everybody saw this coming, especially our enemies. Remember, every single Iranian-backed militia leader in Iraq and Syria is in their fourth safe house by now, living to fight another day. Key takeaway, this administration's idea of deterrence is trying really hard not to kill too many people. Now, this is all deadly serious for our troops, yet very foolish of our leaders. What does 125 strikes on 85 sites even mean? As an army platoon leader, imagine if after losing three of my guys to the enemy, I went out on patrol six days later, came back to my commander and said, successful mission, sir. We shot 125 really expensive bullets at 85 different houses. He'd then ask, but who did you kill? And how did you finish the fight? You see, those are real questions. Everything else is for show for Pentagon press releases and press conferences, for cable news banners. Who did we kill? What did it change? And will it deter anything? Or because of our futility and frankly sheer hubris, will it only further fueling a deeper cycle of instability? You know, our track record in the Middle East for the past two decades, and I've been a part of it, would suggest we're only gonna make this mess messier. More attacks, more instability, more radicalism. Just ask the Taliban. You see, these days we don't finish fights. We don't decimate our enemies. We don't unleash our war fighters. At least this administration doesn't. Ask the former ISIS caliphate whether Trump did. Well, they're not around to answer that question. So our wars become endless and our troops become targets. This is not foreign policy. This is folly. This is, a high, this is playing a high-stakes game of chicken with an enemy and an entire region that collectively chants death to America and death to Israel. It's the founding premise of their country, of their theocratic country. Right now, Iran does not have a nuclear bomb. Good. Imagine once they do. We can bomb empty headquarters in Syria today, but once Iran has a nuclear bomb, this little military-industrial complex charade is over. Bombing a country is an act of war, or at least it used to be. Someday soon, when American power is no longer unquestioned, and that day is coming, bombing countries like this will once again have terrible consequences for far more than three Americans, or 13, at Abbey Gate. After two failed wars, we still have thousands of troops in no man's land in Iraq and Syria some of which clearly cannot defend themselves. Forget what John Kirby tells you. Our troops do not have sufficient air defenses against simple enemy drones. Thousands of Iranian low-tech drones can overwhelm our high-tech air defenses. In this case, it was just one. Imagine a thousand. Does every base have it? Mine didn't. Do theirs? Just ask Israel how that turns out. I also hear from guys on the ground there that their rules of engagement do not truly allow them to secure the areas of operation around their bases. That's why we use phrases like sitting ducks. We're told their mission is to keep a lid on ISIS. Yet Iranian proxies are running rampant around Iraq and Syria, as we saw from these strikes. So it sounds a lot like the strategic mistake of the Iraq war, trying to kill a bunch of radical Sunni terrorists while emboldening Iranian and Shia groups in the process. And voila, who's stronger? Iran. You see, in that region, we try one thing and we get another. That's what I see in the Middle East. And today, we're led by dunces in camouflage who think our diversity is our strength and that climate change is the greatest threat we face. God help us. And with this administration in charge, as old Joe says, may God protect our troops from him. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.